this thing was modeled in Blender using a bunch of basic planes and herbs and with the help of booleans. So what do booleans do and how do we use it? What the boolean modifier does is just one of three things. It basically just adds, subtracts, and intersects multiple different objects within the 3D scene. To use Blender's boolean modifier, you're gonna have two objects. One of this is going to be the main object which we will modify and the other one is going to be the cutter object. So first you're gonna click on the object you wanna cut, go to the modifiers tab and look for boolean. And from there, we will find the three basic operations the boolean modifier does. Intersect, union, and difference. And all you gotta do from here is click one of these operations and select the cutter object by either clicking on this drop down list. This list basically has everything that's in the viewport or we can use the eyedropper which will allow us to select straight from the viewport. And right after that, usually you'll find this odd thing happening where you don't really see anything going on and this is caused by the cutter tool hiding the actual effect. And you can fix this by simply looking for the cutter object in the outliner and hitting the eye icon or a more efficient way is by going to the right side in the object properties panel where you can also happen to toggle the display to but even better, we can even go to the viewport display, click on the display rollout and select wire and this way we can literally edit the cutter object while it's being displayed in wireframe. To see this, if you go to edit mode and go to face select and grab one of its faces, as you can see it is allowing us to edit the cutter object in real time. We can even duplicate the element by pressing shift D and even add modifiers on top of it. And for this example, I am adding the solidify modifier and if you're not familiar with this, this modifier basically just adds thickness to our cutter object. And we can edit again the parameters here in real time. And of course, this method will automatically allow us to display the operation that we select in the boolean modifier. And interestingly, we can also change the cutter object type from object to collection. Now what a collection is for starters is basically just the groupings of objects in the scene. It simply works just like folders, you know, it helps us organize and access objects in the project. You can find it in the outliner, you know, the thing with the box icon, which you can expand to see the objects that are inside it. You can add a new collection by clicking on the button on the upper right corner with a plus sign. You can also add objects just by dragging them there or by selecting them in the viewport and by pressing M which is actually its shortcut key and where you can also access kind of the same options. We can make use of this by again selecting the object we want in our collection which in our case is the cutter object and then pressing M and for the sake of example I'm gonna make a new one and name it cutter object. Now if we select our main object and change the operand type from object to collection we will find that the eyedropper is gone and so now we have to select through the collection rollout and if we select the cutter objects we just made as you can see it works exactly like the other option. Only in this case, instead of duplicating the objects in the edit mode, we can literally achieve that effect by doing it in the object mode and we can even throw in and out objects in the collection and it will automatically process those. So you can just select the cutter object you want to add and press M and move them to the cutter collection or go to the outliner and drag the objects from there. By the way, I've been really trying to make tutorials that are fast, on point and not too daunting to watch and the more people leave likes in my videos, well that sends me the signal that I should make more and those likes also sends a signal signal to YouTube to spread these videos to more people that need it. So if you think this video is worth watching, don't forget to hit like. Right below we have two solver options. The fast solver gives us better performance but it doesn't work well with cutter objects with overlapping geometries. The exact solver on the other hand is a bit slower but can actually handle that. And so if we have our fast solver selected and if we go back to the cutter object and duplicate their elements where they kind of overlap, as you can see the objects will begin to act funny. To fix this without using the collection option, just switch to the exact solver and turn on the self intersection in the solver options. Right below this, we can also choose how the cut affects our materials. In this example, I set the material display for the cutter object as red and if we change the material rollout from index space to transfer, as you can see, it also transfers the material of the cutter object to the main object. And that's basically how you kind of cut with the boolean modifier but Blender also happens to have a little something more to offer when it comes to booleans and that is the free built-in add-on called the bool tool or the boolean tool. To get this, you just gotta go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and search for bool and turn it on. This tool will show up in the right panel which you can toggle by pressing N and by going to the edit tab. And from here, the bool tool will give us two sections of options with operations that are similar to the standard boolean modifier. To use this tool, unlike the standard modifier version, you just gotta click on the cutter object or objects first because you can actually select multiple cutter objects for this and then select our main object that we want to modify last. We kind of have to be careful while selecting because this tool is going to select whatever is the active selection as the main object to be modified. And to check that, you just gotta see to it that the main object is highlighted yellow and the cutter objects should be orange. And if it's not, all you have to do is hold shift and click on the main object. And so let's first try out the difference operation for the auto boolean. And as you can see, it pretty much does the same thing, but it automatically gets rid of the cutter object and there is nothing in the modifier panel that you can edit. And that's because this auto boolean is a destructive method, which means that once you apply this, you won't be able to edit anything anymore. On the other hand, the brush 
boolean option just like the standard boolean modifier is non-destructive which means that if we apply this instead we can still get back and edit this and as you can see it also gives us some parameters in the modifier panel and we can move and edit the cutter object in real time only in this version the cutter object instead of being presented as wireframe it is now being displayed as a box and basically the rest of these operations are still the same but they've just happened to add one more operation called slice which to put it simply is just a combination of the operations intersect and difference another thing that makes this bool tool awesome is that it also happens to have shortcut keys to access the auto boolean all you have to do is hold control shift and in the number pad hit minus for difference plus for union slash for slice and asterisk for intersect and the same corresponding keys also applies to the brush boolean but instead of holding control and shift you only have to hold control and by now you probably understand just how powerful this boolean thing is but you know what they say with great power comes with great responsibility and part of that responsibility is learning how to fix typology and shading issues usually for flat surface objects the boolean modifier works fine troubles usually arise when it comes to curved objects let's take the default sphere and cylinder as an example and apply the brush boolean's difference operation and now if you look close enough you will notice that the edges aren't looking good and the faces have bad shading might you these are also present in some of the examples in the earlier part of this video too but i had to ignore that to demonstrate the basics first so in order to fix and to avoid problems like these you might want to plan ahead and prepare the subdivisions of the objects you're going to use make sure that they are somewhat identical and if possible try to keep them aligned now the non-destructive boolean is very useful in many ways but this right here is kind of its limitation you have to take the destructive route and apply the modifier in order to fix this now what you want to do is turn on the auto merge and simply try to even out the distribution of the vertices by dragging the axis one to another one that's nearby another thing you can also do is select two or more vertices that are on the same edge that you think are too close to each other and merge them because we are going to apply the subsurface modifier on top of this and also try to keep the vertices from getting too close to the edge because we are also going to need to do a bevel to keep it now from here we just have to keep repeating the process to all the axis vertices that are close to the edge of the intersection and right after that what you want to do is select those edges and then apply a bevel with about three to five segments and so here is the cleaned up result and as you can see there's no more bad shading this is ideally what you would want to aim for when you're using booleans again it's always best to use the subsurface modifier and some bevels since this will also make your model a bit more realistic because there's really no perfect edges in the real world now in case you still happen to run into issues with booleans it might help to try to switch between the fast and exact solver make sure to apply all the transforms and that nothing funny is going on in your geometry there shouldn't be any holes or any edges that are holding three planes also try using the weld or merge tool in case you have any overlaps be sure all faces are facing outwards and that you've applied shade smooth or auto smooth if it's necessary and when beveling try toggling hard and normals and clamp overlap overall when using booleans you might need to do a few trial and errors especially when it comes to complex forms you might also run into inevitable n-gons which might take forever to turn to quads and so it is important to have a clear objective about what you need because in some cases you might not need to polish every corner so i made this parametric thin shell structure just to show you how crazy you can go with booleans i basically just started out with a plane edited the vertices used the subsurface and solidify modifier cut it using booleans and then just kept copying it in a slightly different location i then made a couple more variations to this and really just kept repeating the process a bunch of times while trying to get an interesting shape and for the steps i just used curves basically i just kept messing with the handles until i was happy with the shape and then closed it you can add some holes by sneaking in some closed curves or any shape within that curve and to extrude it you gotta go to the object data properties and make sure that the curve type is in 2d and now what you gotta do is change the fill mode to front or both and then put some amount in the extrude value you can also bevel the edges down below and from here you can just copy it with the consistent intervals in the z axis and then kind of tweak the vertices by the x and y axis repeatedly per step i then exported this to unreal engine through datasmith but if you want a tutorial for that i actually have one in my channel in unreal engine i applied a simple white material i put in some interior hdri from hdri haven added some lights around the model a few cameras and rendered the clips i'm about to upload some more tutorials about the crazy stuff you can do with blender and unreal engine and so you might want to hit subscribe if you're up to that catch you on the next one bye bye